How's everyone? Welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. For this video, I've removed the USI packs from the install, except for the survival pack, which we've used apart from, and I didn't want any of the existing craft to be eliminated. Uh, that shouldn't cause a problem because there are no plugins involved anymore. They're just parts in that pack that we will preserve uh, for the sake of our existing craft. And to the fact, uh, to the fact that we have not gotten any error as far as uh, craft being eliminated, uh, we really shouldn't be getting this contract configurator exception, which was what happened before when I tried to remove USI and why I didn't ultimately remove USI. And it's the bases and stations crew rotation bit, which I really like. Of course, we've been doing some of that, uh, but it has a null reference exception because um, an object is no longer there. Uh, so I'm going to ignore the exception, but it's given me no warning about any station being eliminated or anything like that. We haven't lost anyone. Uh, assigned... Well, we're missing somebody, aren't we? Where's Bill? <laughs> um, higher next to zero, 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 zero. I, uh, I don't think I can get rid of USI like that. Let, let's see what craft files... I've zipped up the save before trying this, obviously, so we can restore everything. I'm pretty sure we had more Kerbals than this. But I think the Kerbals with special jobs got eliminated, but that doesn't count Bill, right? Bill did not have a special job. Bill is just Bill. Uh, okay, Bill's here. Uh, but... It says no crew control. Bill's here. This is firing. Um, why does removing USI do all this? <laughs> There's no good reason for this, surely. And KSP crashed. Okay, let me let me check. Let me remove the survival pack. We'll see. Okay, on starting to save this time, of course, we have the warning because I've removed that part now. And, uh, well, Vessel Gamma 3 and Vessel Delta weren't that important, so I guess it's okay. We'll get rid of them. Again, I've got the save zipped up anyway. But, yeah, I, I don't feel like it's gonna solve our problems, right? They're pretty serious problems, apparently. Uh, yeah, well, we have been informed. So, I mean, the first order of business. Uh, active Crews 10. And they're not listed, and the higher next is zero. So, I'm I'm guessing that uh, we still have our problem. Let's go to the Minmus station and see what's happening with that. We went to the Moon station last time, but I'm getting the feeling that I'm not gonna be able to do this. Uh, so we're probably gonna put USI back in, and I'll need a vote on whether to what to do about Kerbalism then maybe. But I mean, we can deal with all the errors. <laughs> I like the overheating uh, being really severe, and I don't know why that is. I did remove USI tools, by the way. I didn't forget anything. So this is... Well, uh, well, we don't have comms right now, but that might be okay. Or how it's supposed to be. And again, I see no comm lines at all. <laughs> Which uh, probably isn't how it's supposed to be. There should be comm lines between other things, right? How is it that our entire comm system has gone down? Okay, well, yeah, this isn't working. But it's not as severe as the moon station. Is that still acting up? There's a different kind of science we're doing right now. Kerbal mod science. And KSP crashed immediately. <laughs> KSP crashed immediately. When turning to the moon station. Okay. We're putting everything back. <laughs> okay, we are back. There are no warnings. And let's just check our moon station. <laughs> let's, let's go over to the moon station. Make sure everything's alright. Yeah, it's fine. We've got Dudebus and Bill over here, actually. I don't know why Dudebus didn't even show up. Well, because Dudebus is a farmer. Dubus didn't show up. Was that why the whole station went crazy? Because Dudebus is a farmer? I don't know. But, yeah, it's intact anyway. So, they're there. 
I mean, I, I don't think everything would have been perfectly all right if we had brought them back first, so I think it would still all go bad. It might have to something to do with the special occupations, but I remember a while back removing USI in a previous version of KSP and it not causing quite so much uh, havoc. So yeah, we've got just those two assigned and everybody else, but we will just progress. We will just continue like this. Active contracts, the stupid green sandstone. <laughs> Surface sample from Mimis Basins because we didn't actually go to the basins. Explore Duna. I want to land on Duna. I want to launch a Duna space station and also a lander. That is, that is what I want to do. I'm going to, since we have no contract for EVE right now, there's a science day from Surface of Gilly, but that's it. There's a launch EVE space station though. Doesn't pay as much. Okay, we'll launch an EVE space station. It just needs to support the Kerbals. It's about the same parameters as the other space stations we've launched. And we'll have a Gilly thing with it. I wanted to launch a Kerbal over though. But and yeah, it'll be good to have the space station contract for that anyway. Okay. So yeah, we will launch a space station with a Kerbal with lots of supplies, but it won't be a permanent space station. It'll actually be something that comes back. Yeah. That's my plan. All right, let me get building and see if we end up killing another Kerbal. But don't worry, it'll be one of those other... <laughs> it's horrible to say. Uh, um, someone else, yeah. Anyway, uh... Colonist. Colonist seems expendable, right? I don't want to hire him for 198,000, though. But darn it. That's so generic. I mean... Colonist, if you say you're a colonist, you're just asking for it, right? I'll hire the colonist and we're gonna send the colonist over to EVE. You know, looking at our Minmus station rocket, it occurs to me that we might not be able to get this done very easily under the 140 ton pad limit, and we've got money now. Uh, so I'm gonna upgrade, it's only 564,000 anyway, so we're gonna have unlimited everything like that. These vessels were landed at a launch pad. Oh, well, they're probably clamps. Uh, remove before, fine, recover. Okay, now can I upgrade? All right, it's fully upgraded. All right, so we needed to do that. Now I can build my rocket. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have made things substantially larger now. Uh, we are actually five times the mass that we were before. Uh, more than five times the mass that we were before. We had a limit of 140 tons. We're now at 738 tons. And that is because I've gone with larger boosters and liquid fuel and oxidizer engines, especially the Bobcats. And this allowed us to keep our costs down. And so we're only 226,000 on the cost for this rocket. I say only, but you know, uh, we're getting a lot for the contract, so it's okay. And we are going with uh, full shielding on the mobile processing lab and the salamander command pod that adds up to seeding for four which is per the requirement uh it needed support for four kerbals and it doesn't need a cupola but did need a science lab so that's what we have we have seeding for four kerbals and we have the docking nodes of course and plenty of fuel in these balloon tanks uh, these solar panels are actually attached up here and shifted down sorry uh as far as Kerbalism is concerned, uh, we are going to have one crew, that is the colonist, Luli, Lully, Lully. Uh, we've got 100 years of nitrogen, so that doesn't matter. Um, food, 14 years. Water, 30 years. That's because of a recycler. And oxygen, 9 years. Now, we, we should probably diminish the food a little bit. Uh, I'll have to remember to unlock it, though. We'll go for 9 years. and then lock it. That's more than enough for the trip, but we might want to send Kerbals elsewhere. And water, it's mainly because of the recycler, so I want to have some buffer on it. We'll say 18 years, and we'll lock it for now. 
Um, I don't know if we can. Oh, we've got some here for launch. We'll have to remember to unlock that <laughs> water, otherwise we'll be in trouble. Um, okay, so hopefully that's all true. And then habitat is good. Reliability, stress, okay. Comfort, poor. It says duration four years, but we know that's probably not true. Living space is ideal. And actually, uh, yeah. No, it says ideal. Call home, yes. We've got bigger antennae. We've got the largest antennae we can pack. We've got these sun antennae, uh, two of them. And panorama. I mean, we could have put a cupola, but a cupola only fits one, I believe. So that's a lot of extra mass for not a whole lot of benefit. I don't. Uh, did we unlock the cupola yet? I don't think so. Anyway, we'll set that aside for now. Um, Lully will be alone, so, and there's no exercise. So it's rough, but it says four years here. We don't know if that's true or not. Um, technically, Lully is not part of the requirements here. This is just a test. Uh, we just need to put a station in orbit around Eve. And it didn't say anything about, uh, whatchamacallit, the Kerbal actually being on board. So, you know, anyway, we'll, yeah. So we are we are trying to protect Lully, but Kerbalism, as far as the radiation goes, says that even though we have full shielding on everything, it says interplanetary only two years, two hundred sixty-four days. Uh, solar storm uh, two years, actually two years for solar storm is pretty nice. We need to stick into a magnetopause. I don't know what kind of radiation Eve has right now. Hopefully it has a nice magnetopause, because <laughs> that's 10 years, or, I mean, we, we're not going to this Eve's surface. It says 136 years, but that's not really how long a Kerbal's going to survive there. So, yeah, what we'd like is a very nice magnetopause, apparently, and, yeah, otherwise two years is not much, and I do wonder what they expect us to do for long-range missions if we have full shielding and that's the best we can do so yeah anyway but uh two years will be enough for this i believe uh, it's let's see i think it was one year round trip kind of thing so and we have to divide by two on what kerbalism says because kerbalism is going with uh 12 hour days i think so Basically, we're talking about just one year, and then Lully is probably going to have extra arms. So, yeah, that's the situation. I, I'm of two minds whether to actually send Lully on this. Now, we don't have the Gilly Lander, and you know what? Uh, for now, I think I'm going to wait on the whole Gilly thing. We're, we're going to launch this station, and then we're going to try to uh, launch... By the way, uh, the Duna station here has all these check marked, and it's all happy with that stuff. But for some reason, this Eve station one doesn't have it all check marked. Do you see that Duna station all nice and check marked? But Eve station, none of it is check marked. That worries me. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I guess we'll find out. So. I'm gonna add uh, this Ostrut root part. Uh, this Ostrut root part. And this is obviously quite an assembly here. Uh, quite a rocket. It's a shame that we didn't have fairing bases that were wider, but this is our widest fairing base available right now. So that's why it looks like that. And we've got a cluster of uh, seven bobcats at the bottom, six in a ring. Well, it's a total of 12 nozzles and then two in the center. Uh, one engine, two nozzles in the center. Okay. Oh, this isn't even the, the Eve window. I'm rushing things. We have to wait. Well, it looks so sort of nice on the pad, though. But we have to recover and wait for 92 days. It occurs to me, while we're time warping here, that we really need to bring back Bill and Dudebus from the moon station. Do we have a contract for something like that? Like, abandoned moon station? <laughs> Form a science experiment on moon station. Is it gonna break the contract sequence if we bring the the crew back? I don't know. Oh, on Moon Station, Dudebus Kerman has been exposed to intense radiation. Uh oh. 
50% radiation, both of them. Okay, well, we'll have to wait on the Eve thing. Uh, we really need to pay constant attention to these things because they don't orient properly with respect to the sun during solar storms. So we're going to send a mission out to bring them back from the moon station. Okay, we are just launching a standard moon or Leo. No frills. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition, and launch. Okay, staging. Uh, that doesn't look quite right there. There's still a way OP for this. Okay, we will just deorbit this stage. So, separation. And we've got a little terrier here. Okay, we have made orbit. We had a brief communication blackout that delayed that, but we are okay. And targeting the moon. Well, we seem to have a comm site coming up. Okay, ignition. We're not connecting through it though, apparently. I still haven't looked for updates to all the mods. Decided to try the USI thing first. Okay, we have a shutdown. Uh, it's a little bit too close. Oh yeah, well it's just getting worse. Um, no, we went really far. Okay, there we go. Moon periapsis. Alright, we will just make sure we get power and then head on over there. Let's pick up some irradiated kerbals. Let me wait a little bit so that we get the encounter information. I'll take this one. Hopefully they haven't mutated or anything. Well, we're gonna expend this stage right now. Got lots of Delta V though. Well, but we have to keep in mind that we have to slow down in low carbon orbit again. Okay, separation. I mean, they've got a vessel there already. I should have just used that. But I guess an extra is not bad. Okay, we have docked. I think I will just use ship manifest to transfer the crew. Some interesting stuff we've got here. Uh, I mean, this one obviously could have brought them back. But we'll just leave it here as a uh, just-in-case measure. Yeah, it's got more fuel than we have right now, and it's the same sort of kind. Okay, but we are fine and good to go. Always good to demonstrate our quick, quick rescue of Kerbals from the moon, just in case. 51 and 52 percent radiation right now. I mean, in theory, we should have probably just left this one on there and brought the other one back since this one's newer and will have fewer immediate failures, but it'll be fine. We are on Lunar Escape. Okay, a little bit too low. That's what I want. Well, nope. I want it in outside the atmosphere. Outside the atmosphere. Okay, that's what I wanted. All right, and we have enough to decelerate once we get there. Proceeding. Here comes Kerbin. Always with the extreme radiation. Okay, that should be close enough to periapsis. Retro burning. 
Come on, try and hit the space center in particular. It's over here. We'll try and, and we're burning over on this side. We'll just bring our periapsis right down into the atmosphere. Then we'll see where we end up. And as long as we're coming down on daylight side, I'm happy. Okay, time for service module separation. And off it goes. Arming the parachutes at the right pressure. Service module destruction confirmed. Other thing heating as well. I guess the heat shield and the pod? Heat shield and the pod. Okay, we are through the worst of it. Not even particularly holding retrograde anymore. Nobody passed out. Okay, parachutes are out. And we're quite safe as far as the velocity is concerned. And touchdown. All right. Recover vessel. All right. Well, we'll have to do a lot of medical tests on them to see how they how they have fared with their high radiation dosage, but we will continue to time warp to the eve window and then launch our eve station slash ship. I'm I'm reconsidering the station slash ship because I don't think we have enough delta v to get back from eve with it if we get into a low orbit, which I think the contract requires. We're gonna take 1,700 for an ejection, but insertion is 2,400 it says, but that's too low orbit though. And then the return is another 2,249. I mean, if it's really those numbers, we, we need more, I think, than what we've got packed. I mean, it feels like I'm overdoing it though. <laughs> I got a cryogenic fuel tank there, five of these uh, Prometheus Perseus cryogenic engines, you know. We even extended this tank a bit, a six meter extension. I'm using balloon tanks on the station itself. But maybe we'll need more balloon tanks. It says 3,129, still not enough, that's, well, 3,778 is good, if we get that. Now it's reading 0 meters per second there, um, <laughs> that is complicated. Is it really only 2,000 meters per second, 2,300 meters per second from this stage? Hmm. I'd like my cryogenic stage to be doing more than that. So it's complicated. There's a trade-off here. We've got a cryogenic stage with high efficiency here that we will hamper by making the payload more powerful. But then again, we can't use the cryogenic stage stuff when we get to EVE because of boil-off. So we'll launch it and then we'll launch subsequent missions to follow it. And in fact, I've reconsidered, I think we'll launch the Gilly lander as well, but I'll do that in the next video. For now, we are going to send our colonist out and see how that colonist fares, and there will be suspense. But in the next video, I'll probably send a few other things to Eve uh, to chase after, just in case. But we'll see how this rocket does, this new, brand new, huge rocket now pushing over 750 tons and yeah very expensive project we've got here but we also have to think about duna right if this works out then we're probably gonna launch something similar to duna we have the duna station contract oh now it's check marked everything except for support for kerbals why does it not support for kerbals It seems to support four kerbals. Does it not like the salamander pod? I could 
exchange it or the Leo. The Leo will be the lightest. You know what? Let's just put a Leo. Okay, well, as expected, it still doesn't read that this supports four Kerbals. We've got Lily in there, and we are at the right time. So we are going to launch and see if it reads it properly outside. Uh, yeah, yeah, here it says supports four Kerbals. Don't know why there's a discrepancy, but okay. Uh, let's make sure there are no other important discrepancies. Well, right now I'll say a lot of things. Well, especially oxygen is perpetual because we're on the surface. All right. Um, we should have scrubbing and everything. This is based on the other station. We have a little life support container along with the other support stuff and pressurization and everything. Okay, well, it's not reading throttle again. Okay, and SAS on. And we'll try it. Ignition and launch. And it's going up. going up. The largest rocket we've launched so far by far by a factor of five. I hope Lully appreciates that. Okay a bit laggy with all this but otherwise looking good so far. Okay, booster set. Uh, not quite right. But, okay. Apparently an engine malfunctioned on one of them. Presumably that one that's far out there, maybe. So, separatrons are not perfectly reliable around here. You have to keep that in mind. I probably are, I'm gonna wish I had better reaction wheels on the payload though. <laughs> ultimately, ultimately I can foresee that. I don't know if I want to risk the payload ferrying deployment, but we're pretty high up already. Okay, they went off without hitch. No worries. Alright, that stage is out. Separation and ignition. I don't know if these engines ought to have the boop or not, but they have the boop. Oh no! There's no ignition. There's only one ignition on these. I didn't have the upgrade on them so they could reignite. Ah, shucks. Is that a no no reignition or just a maybe won't reignite? Can we just go straight out to Eve? That's a dodgy option. Let, let me... Uh, well, I can't throw down like that. Let me throw down while I think about this. I think we can actually go straight out. Well, this is probably a bad idea. But either we use this Delta V or we lose the Delta V, so... We're going down. <laughs> That's not ideal, actually. Well, depends on the way you look at it, but we'll eventually overheat, so let's not do any more of that. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, we lost something. This was too ambitious. We lost one of the solar panels. I may have been hasty here. Alright, let's see if anything reignites. Oh, they can reignite! Um, well, how many times can they reignite? Uh, we're, we're no longer in the right... Okay, fine. I'll cut it. One engine's failed. We'll, we'll try and wait around and see if we can reignite them again. Let me actually plot it this time. Well, that looks pretty close over there. So that's the good news. Yeah, we have an encounter there. Bad news is we, uh, we don't know how many of these will actually ignite. <laughs> um, 
Then we also went through the radiation belts again. But darn it, we have full shielding. Okay, well, I'm gonna throttle up a little bit. We have one engine. And keeping it on is not a good idea. Hmm. It's a bit complicated now. Let me, uh, let's wait one orbit while we reassess this. Seems like a pretty good EVE opportunity, though. Oh, and we're still in the atmosphere. We at least need to get out of the atmosphere. Well, we meet our demise. Okay, separating the stage. Okay. Well, this stage, right now, it says we have 4,000 meters per second. That was more than I was expecting. Um, let me see. Radiation. No, there, there don't seem to be any radiation belts around EVE. Hmm. Uh, I was hoping for a nice big magneto pause, considering that allowed the Kerbals to stay there for a long time. So we're not getting that. Well, a loose capture does not seem to cost much. 329. But we have to take into consideration the contract requirement. It says below 1,025 kilometers. So we need it all the way down basically like that. And we could get there and we can apply that delta V. But then we won't have enough to get back. So we're going to do that and we are going to send another mission to dock with it with the extra fuel so that it can get back and we'll do that in the next episode. So despite the failures we are going to proceed and at least Lully will be able to capture. Um, one panel should be enough at EVE. Let's extend the panel. Right now it's recharging plenty so no problems. In terms of supplies, right now it says the water is only five days but that's because we still have it locked. Now it says two years. But it said 10 years before. Are we not running our recycler? Is it not got to take that into consideration? Here. You are a water recycler. Is it not considering that? Or are we really down to just two years? Which could be enough. But we have two water recyclers, by the way. We do have a backup. But yeah, that was once again not what it told me in the VAB. 2% radiation already. Off to a great start. And we're going through the radiation belts one more time here. Well, the little spark engines are high quality ones. I guess this is sort of like Mars 1 except it's EVE 1 and we're not actually landing, Lully. Okay, I'll cut it right there and we'll take care of any issues on the mid-course adjustment and there will be issues. Okay, we have a mid-course adjustment that I'll add into the alarm clock and then we will check out the maneuver to capture to the required altitude. Let's not overdo it. Uh, less than 2,000, so yeah, but definitely don't have enough to get back. So, yes, we can send Lully there, but right now we're not in a situation where we can bring Lully back. Uh, Lully probably has enough time, we'll have to see, but we can call this a station. We will call this a station. 
taking radiation damage. Okay, it is now vessel type station that we have to get into orbit around Eve. So, yeah, radiation is happening. Lully is already somewhat irradiated. But we will try and turn Lully so that tail is to the sun. Hopefully that will help things in the long run. Okay, so we will leave Lully for now and launch the support missions, uh, which will hopefully keep Lully alive and also get a landing on Gilly. And then if this all works out, well, if it works out well enough before we have the Duna window, we'll launch something similar to Duna. I don't know if we'll have a Kerbal on that or not, we'll see. Uh, we will see about that. It might be easier not to have a Kerbal on that. I will think about that. But next time we'll have a couple more launches for Eve, and then we'll proceed. And we'll try and get Lully there in the next episode. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.